Hey there friends, Andrea Wolford here from Make Beautiful Cards. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this strawberry thank you card featuring Stampin' Up's Sweet Strawberry Bundle. Now this card features how to create a soft ink blended background, coloring with Stampin' Blend's alcohol markers, and how to create a double bow using some Baker's Twine. So the bundle that I'm using to create this card, as I mentioned, is the Sweet Strawberry Bundle, which consists of the Sweet Strawberry Stamp Set and the Strawberry Builder Punch. Now, I won't actually be using the Strawberry Builder Punch in this video, but I did want to show it to you just so that you would know what the bundle consists of. As you can see here in my card, I'm using three of the images from the stamp set. I'm using the strawberry, the outline image, I'm using the stem, and then I'm using the flower image. Now one of the reasons that I didn't end up using the punch is one because when you use the punch as you can see here you end up with this white border around the images and if you look at my card you can see that there's just a little border around the stem and pretty much no border around the strawberries. Now I like fussy cutting to begin with but either way even if you were to use the punch as you can see here the strawberry image doesn't have a corresponding punch or die so since I ended up fussy cutting that as well I just decided that it was simpler for me anyways to fussy cut everything. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be stamping our images onto a piece of white cardstock. Now I already have my images mounted on acrylic blocks and I'm going to be stamping them in my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So I'm just going to ink up my strawberry and stamp. So I'm going to stamp two of the strawberries, I'm going to stamp two of the stems, and then I'm going to stamp one of the floral image. So there you can see what our stamped images now look like. So we're going to start with coloring one of the strawberries and for that you're going to need an acrylic block. You're going to, we're going to be using that as a palette and you'll see what I mean in a moment. And then I'm going to be using light and dark flirty flamingo and light and dark poppy parade. So let's start with the flirty flamingo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically cover the entire surface of the strawberry and my light flirty flamingo. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start add away, adding our shading and we're going to be using our three remaining colors and I'm going to be working from dark to light. So starting with the dark poppy parade. I'm going to use a flicking motion and I'm working from the stamped outline inwards. And I want to add the darkest color here along the left side of the strawberry and along the bottom. And you can see I've added quite, it's quite thick in that area. I'll probably extend it a little bit more along the side here. And then continuing to work in the direction of the outline inwards. I'm going to continue on around the perimeter of the strawberry, but as you can see along the top, and the left side, my stroke is a lot narrower. So now I'm going to take the medium color and I'm going to blend that just over the border of the dark poppy parade. So I'm not going all the way to the outline, I'm just basically going over the edge of the dark poppy parade. And then I'm going to come in with my flirty flamingo and I went over the edge of the medium poppy parade and then you can see um, I, I left a little bit of this light flirty flamingo. So now I'm going to go over that very last inside area with my light flirty flamingo. So I'm basically creating a highlight. Now if you look at this you can see that the color variation so where we move from one color to another still looks quite choppy so we need to blend that out and this is what 
this comes uh, this acrylic block is going to be used for. We're going to be using it as a palette and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating intermediate colors. So and the reason we're doing that is because if you look to see so the difference between the dark poppy parade and the light poppy parade and then the difference between the light poppy parade and the dark flirty flamingo there's enough of a difference that it can make it really challenging to create a nice smooth blend. So the way we're going to counteract that is by creating an in-between color. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my dark poppy parade and I'm going and I've colored a bit onto my acrylic block. Now I'm going to come in with my light poppy parade and I'm going to pick up some of that color and I'm going to blend it over this area. And every time I start to run out of that little bit of color, I'm going to come in again. And so what this does is the color that we're picking up blends with the color that we're using. So the dark poppy parade is blending with the light poppy parade. Now I'm going to take my light poppy parade and I'm going to color some onto my block and I'm going to pick up my light or my dark flirty flamingo. And then I'm going to go over the edge of my that blend that we just created in the last step. And already, if you take a look, you can see that our blend is a lot smoother. And then finally, I'm gonna color some of my dark flirty flamingo and I'm gonna take my light flirty flamingo and then I'm gonna color over this last blend. Now this light is quite, there's quite a difference between the light and the dark flirty flamingo. So if you find it looks too white, like for me this does, you can just go over it. We'll just go over it with the light or with the dark flirty flamingo. So now I'm just gonna come back with my markers and I'm gonna touch up. So there's an area here that looks like it needs to be touched up a little. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of my dark and then I'm gonna touch that up and blend it out. And then let's come in and just blend this edge. And there you can see we've colored our strawberry. So now what we're going to do is we're going to color our leaf. So let me just close my markers because we're going, I'm going to color the other strawberry off camera. And now we're going to color our leaves. So for the leaves, I'm using light shaded spruce and dark shaded spruce. And I chose these colors because I needed colors that matched my ribbon. So this is the ribbon that I'm using and this is a Just Jade. So a Just Jade gingham ribbon. So I wanted to make sure that the greens on my images match the green of my ribbon. So I'm gonna start with my dark Just Jade and using the brush tip, I'm just going to place a little bit in the inner area of these leaves. And since the leaves are so small, I'm just gonna color both of them at the same time. And then I'm going to take my, oh, sorry, this isn't um, just jade, this is shaded spruce. Well, which it's tone on tone with just jade anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It matches the ribbon, let's put it that way. So there you can see how that looks. So now let's go ahead with this image here and we're gonna color our leaves. So I'm gonna take the dark shaded spruce and as you can see, I'm basically, I'm starting at the tip and then I'm following along with the veins on the leaves. Now I'm gonna take my light shaded spruce and I'm gonna blend just over the edge of the dark shaded spruce. And when I say, when, I, when I'm coloring and I tell you I'm blending just over the edge, it means that I am going over the edge of the darker color, but not very far. And I'm feathering outwards towards the outside of the leaf. Now, if after you've colored that first layer and you find that the edges still haven't blended very well, you can go over the, just the very edge a second time with your light shaded spruce. So that's what I'm doing right now. And notice I'm not extending my strokes all the way to the end because I don't want to darken the outer edges of the leaves. Basically at this point, I just really wanna soften the edges of my dark shaded spruce. 
So there you can see how that looks. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our color lifter that you see here. And then I'm going to use my dark flirty flamingo. And this again is gonna help us create kind of an intermediate color. So I want the strawberry flowers to be white with a hint of pink. So I'm gonna take my color lifter, I'm gonna pick up some of that dark flirty flamingo. And then I'm just going to start at the center of the flower and very carefully flick it outwards. And what this does is this gives you a much softer, subtler color than if you were to use the, the dark flirty flamingo directly. Now for my last flower, I'm gonna put a little uh, above the petal there and then around it on the inside of the other petals like so. Now when you're done, then what you're gonna to want to do with your color lifter is you're going to just want to brush it on some scrap paper to get rid of any of that color that you picked up. Now to clean up your acrylic block, you can take a cotton face pad and some alcohol and wipe it and it'll come right off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to color the uh, remaining strawberry and then I'm gonna fussy cut all these images out. And then once I've done that, I will be back. So I finished fussy cutting my images. You can see what they look like here. Now I do have a video on YouTube called How to Fussy Cut Like a Pro. So if you want some tips for fussy cutting, how to get great results, then be sure to watch that video. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of my liquid glue and I'm going to place some on the leaves And then I'm going to stick that onto the top of my strawberry. So there you can see how that looks. So I'm going to set that aside now and we're going to create our sponged background. So I want to work on a scrap piece of grid paper. I'm just going to flip this to a clean side. I'm gonna use one of Stampin' Up's new blending brushes. This is a new product in our um, January to June 2021 mini catalog, and I really like these blending brushes. They give a nice, smooth blend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip this into my Blushing Bride ink, and then I'm gonna pounce off on my paper, rubbing a little bit. And then I'm just going to applying, using a very light touch, I'm gonna to start rubbing this color along the center of my cardstock. Now, when you're blending with an ink blending brush, it's very different than when you're blending with a Stampin' Sponge or when you're blending with a sponge dauber. First of all, what I love about it is that you get a super smooth application of ink um, and you don't have to worry about harsh edges, unless of course you don't do this pouncing off thing. Um, the thing about the blending brushes though, is it builds, if you're using it correctly, it builds the color up quite slowly. So as you can see here, I've gone and pounced on my ink and I've added ink. This is our second layer and it's still quite light. So what you're gonna be doing is to create this nice soft background, you wanna make sure that you're building in layers. So I'm gonna come in a third time, pounce off. Now what I recommend when you're doing this is every single time you start, so you first touch your brush to your paper, start where you know that the cardstock will be hidden just in case you didn't pounce off enough. So in the case of my card, as you can see here, this area here, if I were to accidentally end up with some kind of an ink blot, it would be hidden behind these strawberries. So every time I pounce, that's where I'm starting. And then from there, I'm moving to the areas where I want to pull the color. And you really just add color until it gets to the depth that you want it to be. And it's a spread out as you want it to be. So I think I'm probably going to leave the color like so. So the next step is to take a strip of patterned paper, and this is uh, patterned paper comes from the Blushing Bride uh, patterned paper collection. It's a pad of six by six 
uh, sheets that have four different patterns. So it's two, each sheet will be double-sided, so it'll have a different pattern on each side. So you can see this one has wood grain on the other side. And I'm going to take my snips and on one side, making sure the text is in the correct orientation, I'm going to cut this on an angle. Then what I want to do is I want to stick it so that it's about one and a quarter inches up from the bottom edge of my card and it's going to be about one inch in from maybe a little bit like between one inch and three quarters of an inch in from the right hand edge of the card like so. So I'm going to go ahead and now that I have this in place I'm going to place a little bit of adhesive and then I'm going to stick that down. I find it easier to do it that way than to take it off, put adhesive, and then and then align it. So there you can see how that looks. Now let's flip it over and we're going to trim the overhanging edge like so. Now I have here a pair of fabric scissors. When you use your scissors a lot for paper, you'll find that the blade tends to dull, and then when you're trying to work with delicate ribbons, you can end up it really chewing up the end of the ribbon instead of, um, instead of getting a nice clean cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a four inch piece of ribbon, and so I'm gonna cut it there, and I wanna cut that ribbon on an angle. And then this ribbon, I'm also going to cut on an angle. Like so. Then we're going to be sticking the ribbons so that they overlap one another. So as you can see, I very carefully applied some adhesive. And then now, I'm gonna overlap the ribbons and I just wanna make sure that this is straight. So you can use the lines on your pattern paper to help you make sure that you're sticking things down straight like so. And if you, know, if you accidentally miscalculated while laying down your double-sided adhesive and you ended up with extra adhesive, then what you can do is you can simply use your adhesive remover. Because I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. There we go. And there's no adhesive overhanging. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna take our strawberry image here. And I'm gonna take my liquid glue. I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the center of the center back of each of these pieces on my, so each leaf and each flower. And then I'm just gonna add or spread the glue a little bit with the tip on the stem. I'm not really squeezing, I'm just spreading out some of that glue. And then I'm gonna position the flower and I'm gonna stick it down. So you can see I'm sticking it so that the stem is overlapping the ribbon. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a double bow. So I have here my twine. This is, um, this is Baker's twine. It comes in the mini catalog. I can't remember what it's called, but it comes in a set of two, Blushing Bride and White Twine. And so I'm gonna use the white, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece that is 22 inches long. And we're gonna create a double bow. So I'm gonna do my best to slow this down so it's easy to see. So you're gonna hold the end of the ribbon at the end of the twine across your hand, like so. So as you can see, from where my finger starts to where the twine is, that's probably about a three, three, three and a half inch piece. Now I'm gonna hold my two fingers together 
uh, or open rather, and about as wide as I want the loops of my bow to be. So now I'm gonna take the end and I'm gonna bring it under my pointer finger, over my middle finger. And then I'm gonna come under my middle finger, over my pointer finger. So you can see now here I have two loops and then I'm gonna come back over my middle finger and, and then bring this up in between my two fingers. So this is what it looks like. So now notice this little V shape here. I'm gonna take this end and I'm gonna feed it through that V shape and I'm gonna pull, but I'm not pulling it tight at the moment. So you can see now here, this loop that I have created, okay? So as it goes over and through the V, it's now coming up the bottom. I'm gonna take the end and I'm gonna feed it through the loop in this direction. So I'm bringing it up and then I'm gonna feed it through like so. And then I'm going to pull. Now I'm not tugging insanely tight because I wanna be able to adjust this if I need to. Now when you're doing this technique, you are gonna end up with more ends than you need, but if you end up with, if you cut your ribbon too short, then you can, or your twine too short, then you could actually accidentally end up with not having enough. So you can see here now, I have this beautiful double, um, double ribbon. So now what we wanna do is we want to stick this down and I wanna stick it where I know it's gonna be hidden by my strawberries. Now I find when you're working with Baker's twine, it has a tendency to want to twist and I don't want it to twist. So I'm trying to be careful as I position this. So just to make sure that this really sticks, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick two of these glue dots and these glue dots come in a, in a kit. Um, it's the Boho Indigo Kit. You don't have to use those, of course, Stampin' Up! does sell glue dots on a roll. So I've put two glue dots kind of overlapping, and now I'm gonna very carefully take my double bow, and I'm going to position it over my glue dot, and then I'm gonna stick it down. And see here, my bow had twisted a little bit, so I'm untwisting it, and then I want my bows to be aligned so you can tell that this is a double bow, like so. So I'm gonna leave that press down. Now I'm gonna take my strawberries, and we're going to stick these down. So I'm gonna use some dimensionals. I have here my mini stamp and dimensionals and my large stamp and dimensionals. So my first strawberry, I'm gonna be sticking on an angle like so. So I'm gonna take one stamp and dimensional and let's just see here. I'm gonna place it over here. And then my second stamp and dimensional, I'm gonna kind of squish over top of um, the bows and that's just to kind of help hold it in place and then now let's go ahead we're going to remove the backing of my stamp and dimensionals as you see here and then i'm going to take my strawberry and i want to position it so that it's and maybe i'll use this one here I'm gonna position it like so, on an angle, slightly upwards. So now I've gone ahead and placed the stamp and dimensionals for my second strawberry. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick that strawberry down, overlapping it with the first, a little bit lower, and on a slight angle, tilted towards the left. And I'm also gonna go ahead and trim my twine. So now we're gonna create 
our greeting. So I have here a scrap piece of um, basic black cardstock. I'm going to be using white embossing powder, a um, coffee filter, of course I want to need my heat tool, and then I'm using the thank you greeting that also comes from this stamp set. Now for my ink, I'm going to be using some Whisper White craft ink. So I'm going to go ahead, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my embossing powder tool. I want to make sure that I liberally place that over my cardstock. And I'm going to ink my greeting. And there you can see I've stamped it onto my cardstock. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to place this on top of my coffee filter. I'm going to sprinkle on my white embossing powder. We're going to tap off the excess. And it looks like I need to grab a little paintbrush just to help me remove some of these embossing powder flecks. And now I'm going to use my heat tool to melt the embossing powder. So I've got my Stampin' Up! heat tool on the number two setting. I'm holding it about an inch away and slowly going back and forth until the embossing powder melts. So there you can see how that looks. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fussy cut this greeting out. I'm not gonna make you watch me fussy cut. I have a video, as I mentioned earlier, how to fussy cut like a pro, which you can watch. So once I've finished fussy cutting this, I will be back. So I've gone ahead, I've cut out my greeting, as you can see here, and then I've gone ahead and put uh, a strip of dimensional foam and I cut it from the edge of my mini stamp and dimensionals and I put it behind the word thank and left the word you with nothing on it because we're going to be overlapping this onto the strawberry so I'm going to peel off the backing from my little dimensional strip and then I'm going to take some of my glue and I'm going to put that at the center back of the U and then I'm going to hold this piece in my with my tweezers. And I want to position it so that it overlaps my strawberry, as you can see here. And I also want it to kind of overlap where the ribbon and the designer paper connect. So now let's go ahead and stick this onto a, a four by five and a quarter inch piece of Whisper White cardstock. And for this, I'm going to use some dimensional foam. And I wanna go ahead and I'm going to use the ends. It just makes it a lot easier, whoops, rather than having to put a bunch of a bunch of uh, Stampin' Dimensionals at the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the backing over here and like that. So one of the Stampin' Dimensionals then to position this on my cardstock piece and before I go ahead and stick that end down I want to make sure that I have it centered. Now that's holding that in place and I can go ahead and I can lift this up and I can remove the backing from the rest of my dimensionals and then I can stick it down. Now I have here a Blushing Bride note card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. 
created out of Blushing Bride cardstock. I'm going to place some double-sided adhesive onto this. And then I'm going to center and stick my panel onto my note card. So now the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to embellish it. So I have here some of my Flowers for Every Season gems. And I want one of these little, they, I don't know if it's resin or epoxy, but one of these clear droplets. Huh, having trouble picking it up with my tweezers. There we go. And then I have here the woven threads sequin assortment, and I'm looking for one pink sequin. So a large pink sequin. And then I'm looking for a small sequin that's kind of an iridescent light pink, like so. So we're going to place the sequins and the gem like that. Now to help stick it down, I'm going to be using my, um, this is some multi-medium matte. And it, it, I just, it basically it's like, um, it's like a glue and it's used in mixed media and it's a little bit thicker than Stampin' Up's, let me just see if I can find my bottle here. So Stampin' Up's um, fine tip glue pen, it's similar, it dries clear, except that it's a little bit thicker than this. And this one, the tip of my bottle dried and I haven't been able to, um, I haven't been able to unclog it. So. I've just started using this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little take your pick tool. And I'm going to pick up my, um, I'm picking up my little sequin, just getting rid of the dried glue on the tip of this. And then I'm going to pull, place a tiny little dot onto my cardstock piece. And then I'm using my tool here to stick it down. A little bit too much of that putty came out. Now I'm gonna lift this sequin up. I'm gonna place a little dot, stick that down, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for my gem. And then now we just lead, need to let that dry. So there you have it, friends. You can see what our card looks like. And it's now finished.